Hey guys, it's Infinity. It is 2.29 on the 29th, middle of the night. It's March 29th, 2020. How are you? How are you? Everywhere in the world, we're pretty much experiencing very similar things. The majority of the world is. Um... And we are looking at the world globally, many of us, because we're all experiencing one thing, and that is really rare in our reality these days. So it's been an interesting time, an interesting time for all of us. Uh, I've done podcasts about it being the coronavirus frustrations. And I think a lot of people could relate to most of that, not all of it. Um, my frustrations about this situation um, is from a really different place than most people, I think. Uh, because most people do not claim to be able to, to heal a person who's dealing or is afflicted with this energy. And I, I am, I do, I, 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 I'm somebody who very much understands the energy of, of this virus. Um, I've gotten information in these last couple of days uh, that was very interesting. And even before that, I was very, well, the reason why I got this information was because before that I was very much in tune and tapped in with it and taking it very seriously and respecting it very much. And um, that led to me being able to connect and get this information. Um, and what I will say about that is uh, it was a channeling and I'm not going to go into right now exactly what I was channeling or who I was channeling because I don't want the message to get lost in the details and sometimes that tends to happen and it's not at this moment in time a completed message it's one that continues to come and I connect to and also uh Well, I guess you could just say it's, um, it's a different type of <laughs> situation on all, on all levels I'm finding with this. Uh, but anyway, what I was saying was, is that I was, I was already very much understanding the seriousness, the gravity, just how contagious. If you read my blog, and even before that, I think my blog came out on the 18th about Corona. And first off that I was changing, I had originally listed it at $200 um, for working with me. And then I was guided to change that to a donation basis and pay what you can when you can, meaning if you have, if you're sick and even if you're not sure if it's Corona or not, it doesn't matter. But if you're sick or, uh, you're dealing with symptoms that are not pleasant and with this virus, it's pretty gnarly. It's pretty gnarly. <laughs> I don't think that people can quite understand what it's like because 
most because people have not experienced it like this before they've never experienced this type of energy in their body so it's hard for people to associate and assimilate the information i think that people are are scared of it but they don't understand it and and people are you know they know they don't understand it because it's all over the place is it not <laughs> it's all over the place seemingly all over the place with who gets afflicted who is asymptomatic who uh tests positive but nothing happens we've heard of a few positive cases tests or tests that are high profile like prince charles and most recently uh i think he's like the most recent uh who else uh idris alba um and all of these people we have not or i honestly i i, I don't know for certain but i have not heard through the major way that I'm plugged in right now, um, that there has been a an update on them. If they're start, if they're be, there's also an incubation period of about seven to ten days, and then you'll start to exhibit symptoms, and they're pretty intense. It's an intense headache, um, intense pressure in the throat and it's all it's mostly I mean your whole body feels it and is very uncomfortable and you have a fever and all that it's super intense but it's mostly in those upper chakras the the heart chakra the throat chakra and the third eye chakras and that's where it it really likes to go and but it does begin and settle into the lungs and it grows from there even though you have to think about it from the 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 efficient way that it overtakes the entire system so it depletes starts very very slowly Shh, it's like let's creep in to the house very quietly and sneak around and do things and set things up in a certain way when somebody's not home or at night when they're asleep you know when you can creep around quietly and nobody's paying attention day after day after day after day after day and then you know laying traps or something like this is just the way that I see it it's kind of like it, com it comes in and you breathe it into your lungs and and you can catch it, you know, like the surface thing. But no matter what, if you're getting it in your nose or your mouth or whatever, um, you can also get it from eye. But mostly it's nose and mouth. And when you do that, um, that's also your breathe. You're taking that in. It's like an inhale. You're consuming it. And so... It's coming into, so whether it, it, whether you touch something and then you touch your food and then you eat it or you inhale it, it's still going to, going to go from both of these, the travel along the same paths in just a different way. So it, but it's all going to end up being the same thing. Um, it's most efficient through the lungs, uh, through through breathing it in because it is airborne mostly it's an airborne illness the the secondary contagious part of it on surface areas is just through like people coughing and sneezing and the wetness from the lungs and the spit and stuff landing on things and then you be, micro droplets okay and then you and that, because obviously, if it was big old spittle things, you wouldn't be sticking your fingers in it. So it's micro droplets of 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 saliva and and what's like phlegm and stuff from inside your lungs and inside your head when you're sneezing and coughing that sprays out and lands on stuff, and then you don't know that you touch it, and then you touch something else, or you touch your face, you touch your mouth a little bit, but mostly it's 
a lot of that comes from eating. And so this is why um, you've heard cases of, of like whole families, like, oh, they had this whole thing going on and all of them got it. It was like, well, they were probably in a situation where they were all eating at the same time, most likely. And, um, and in close quarters where they're breathing it in too. Uh, there's also cases where it'll be like one spouse gets it, the other one doesn't. Why is that? They're usually sharing the same space. Um, I mean, not always, not, not totally, but, but from what I see, this is what I'm being shown, how people contract this, what happens. This is why it's important to wash your hands. This is why it's important not to touch your face. It's why it's important to definitely always touch your hands before you're going to eat anything. And that's difficult to do even if you know better. Because it could just be like, oh, you see like a chip sitting there from earlier like on your plate. And you're like, oh, I'm going to eat that. Well... <laughs> In the meantime, you know, maybe you've gone out to the mailbox or whatever, um, you know, gone to the bathroom or who knows what, but you touch something that, that is, that has that, those trace micro droplets and, and then you, and then you get it. Uh, and so, and, and it's highly contagious. I mean, we can't say this enough. It is highly, highly, highly contagious. I'm going to put a link on this podcast uh, I'm going to be doing another blog probably tomorrow as well because I have a lot to uh, update people on. Uh, but there is an article, well, not an article, it's actually an interview with a vir- virologist and I think that's what he is. I'm, I think that he's a virologist. Anyway, I'm not going to get into it right now. But the bottom line is, is he, he explains that a lot of people are, see this as the flu in many ways because it's like we were saying, like I was saying earlier, what do we have to, to, to extrapolate on? You know, the closest thing to this would be like the Spanish flu, and that was nearly 100 years ago or over 100 years ago. So I know math, <laughs> barely. Um, (laughs) and you know, we weren't around for that. So, um, we don't, uh, we don't understand. We don't, we don't see that from a, we can look at pictures and read, read about it. And even then it was different than this. And it, it was different. There wasn't such a long incubation time. There wasn't so many people asymptomatic. Um, what else? Uh, those are probably two of the biggest components that's different about it. Uh, I think with that influenza, it also affected the body very differently. Um, but the bottom line is, is that it always turns into the same thing, pneumonia and then organ failure and death. And so that's, I keep hearing people go, yeah, they had COVID and pneumonia. It's like, no, they had pneumonia because of COVID. They wouldn't have had pneumonia if they didn't get, you know, that's, it, it is what it, that's what it, that is its end game, basically. If it's, if it had, if you were to ask it, what is your end game? My end game is to overtake the system and, and, and extrapolate as much life force energy as I possibly can. Um, but it takes, it takes several days up to, up to 20 something days. And at this point, when it's that bad, when a person's on a ventilator, um, they're, they're overtaken so much that they have to be put on oxygen because they can't breathe on their own this is what this whole ventilator talk is and it's it's just it's a big deal um but but yeah the end game is overtake the system and it does that through into in the chest area mostly and as it feeds off of the energy of the body Uh, it's kind of doing a system-wide takeover. So,
so uh, it's lit it's kind of like the way that it shows me. It's like it's literally pushing. It's it's feeding off, but also pushing. It's pushing on the energy of the of the person. It's like pushing the energy out of the body almost. It's there's so much pressure. It's like being underwater, and you hear that a lot. It's like being underwater, and and it's once there's you cross over into a certain threshold with this, it's very hard to get back. It's like rare. Like we're hearing about them here and there, but they're rare because. Honestly, I don't think people believe that they they can come back from it. And there's few people who enlist their, who go within deep and and really fight and uh, and bring in those that can that can help them. Uh, and maybe a lot of them once they once they see that option, they're they're so weak that it's just it's and it becomes like that that's just not it's more about transition than it is about recovery at this point <clears throat> so for me uh i know that i can help people with this ideally i would be seeing them when they're starting not to feel well because not just like getting a positive test necessarily because it, it may not be necessary. They, they could be the type of person who gets it very mildly and, and fights it off naturally. And, it, and in that process, there is a, a benefit into working out that energy by yourself um learning the energy being aware of it understanding it on a certain level and if your life force battery is strong enough to to win the battle once it starts to play its game knowingly by you consciously by you uh If you're able to, to win that at that time, and a lot of people are, we, we do know that most people are able to get over it by themselves, even if it gets pretty gnarly, they don't need to be going to the hospital and getting on, on a ventilator. Nobody wants that. <laughs> I think people are rushing to get tested because they want to know if they are and they're you know so and it's and it's and it's good people should get tested I, that's another thing though with being tested people just just you know keep hearing this like oh yeah we should send people out if they're if they test negative and it's like no if they test negative then they should stay home because they know they don't have it and and there could be a pool or a population of people that know that they don't have it and if they stay you know as then they won't get it. It's just, it's not a test for immunity. It's a test for if you had, if you had it at the time that the test was taken, if it's one of these quicker tests that are 45 minutes after, you know, getting the, the sample, then that's pretty much right away. And, and it's a really good indicator that you definitely don't have it, or you definitely do have it. The ones that are longer, like five and seven days, well, in those five and seven days, most people are not staying under lock and key and not commingling with other people so to me those numbers are are not are not very accurate if we're looking at people taking tests on monday and not getting the result until like saturday or sunday what has happened within those all of those days that could change that negative to a positive Unfortunately, it doesn't work the other way around. <laughs> but there's a lot there for most people. I mean, our, our very own 
brilliant Rand Paul, representative of Louisiana, I believe, uh, a physician, no less, thought he may have been exposed, got a test, and then proceeded to act like he was living everyday normal life, going to the gym and swimming in pools and, and yeah. <laughs> so it's those types of things that make me go, yeah, <sighs> not even worth it. If people are not going to, you know, go, I may have gotten infected. I'm going to test and I'm going to go self-isolate and then I'm going to wait for the results and then I'll know. And in that, in the meantime, I'm not infecting anybody else. It's not a test for immunity. And that is not driven home nearly enough. And you hear people talking about like, oh, well, if people aren't, they don't have it, then we, they should be get back to work. It's like, fuck, what, what, how does that make any sense? It really, really doesn't. It's like the whole point is keeping yourself from getting sick and keeping other people from getting sick. And if you know you're not sick right now, then it's better to keep, keep yourself from getting sick because, oh, this is what I was getting to before, 20-something <laughs> minutes later, that... There's this virologist or whatever he is, I can't remember right now, but he explains that with the flu, one person can potentially, with the rate of contagion, how contagious the flu is, even though a lot of people die from the flu, the rate of contagion and as many people as you can infect being your one person is 14. So you, if you have the flu, you can infect up to 14 people, theoretically, is what they've figured out. Now, through math, with the coronavirus doing the same type of deal that they did with the influenza and figuring out, okay, how many people will you infect? With the coronavirus, it's 59,000 potential people you're responsible So when I, when I saw that, I was like, oh yeah, this guy's on point for sure. I was like, this is exact, this, I didn't know the exact number, but I saw a lot, a lot. And because it's that contagious, it is that fiercely, energetically strong. It is very, very, very strong, extraordinarily strong. But only under certain circumstances is it going to cause an issue in your system. And there's different reasons for that. But the bottom line is, is that there is a, a doorway into pulling off of life force battery because, and winning because there's there's energies in place within the body structure that is in alignment for this energy to come and feed off of. And therefore attaching to the other places, the other energy centers and just feeding, 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 feeding off of it. Whereas some other people, they don't have those doorways. They don't have these energetic attachments. They don't have these these susceptibilities, these vulnerabilities, these immunocompromised energies that are in their system. So a lot of people that have, that have lost this battle are people that are overweight. I'm just, I'm saying it right off the top. Overweight is a big one with underlying health conditions. But I would say oh, overweight or obese is definitely um, one of them. I think if they were going to look at and the weight and the body mass index of, of the people who did not win this battle, it's going to be that, that seesaw is, is not hanging there in the balance. It's, it is, it's a big, big, 
not to say that there aren't people who who didn't win this battle that were not obese that is true but a lot of people ha are overweight who did not win this battle and are not going to win this battle and that's just a fact people that are overweight uh their system is taxed this is why they get heart disease this is why they get diabetes uh those two are the biggest ones but there's addiction energies there and those addiction energies are like throwing a party for this virus and the fact that the body is compromised with being overweight uh, and addicted to, it could be alcohol, it could be meat, it could be sugar, it could be all three, uh, most definitely. And all of those when, well, meat just in itself is a lower frequency vibration because you're taking in murdered animals and that stays in your body, but it's a highly addictive energy and enzyme in the gut that you have been eating and consuming since you were an infant so there you go and then alcohol is very toxic to the system there's no redeeming qualities to it there's nothing good about it for you it just takes from your life force battery uh, and then junk food um, fried foods uh, sugars like I mean like refined sugars and like cakes and and um and candies and that you know like the i'm not talking about like sugars so much that are in breads and pastas because there there's there's also nutritious value value to those carbs whereas like the sugar of the sugary variety uh for the most part no <laughs> so this is why i'm and i'm a total sweet sweet tooth type of person I also like comfort food. I also like fried foods. I don't eat meat um, but for a long time now, but I understand that energy very well. And so anyhow, back to this 59,000 business. So that is a lot. And like I said, I'm in total alignment with that. The information that I've gotten throughout this and continue to get is exactly that this is an extremely strong contagious energy that uh is not discriminate to to ace to race age gender uh Although it seems as though more men are succumbing to it, but more men hold on, men hold on to negative energy more than women do. So that is a reason for that. But but across the board, women and men get it. Um, women are more asymptomatic and don't get it as badly as men do. So they're they're able to fight that off. Just. It's just because women transmute energy better. We release energy more freely than men do. Men tend to bottle up negative energy and not process it and just, you know, kind of dig, you know, just dig it deeper. <laughs> and not to say that women don't do that. This is just, you know, women cry more freely. We are more free with our expression. And men are getting way better at this, especially in the light body collective. However, just the kind of the way things are um, in our in our reality right now with the genders, with the divine masculine and the divine feminine. That's just that's just where we're at. Um, so anyhow, for me, dealing with with the coronavirus the way that I am now it's interesting because I already live a pretty isolated life um living in the mountains and it's a small community and I don't I moved here I didn't really know anybody I don't I continue to not know very many people and the people I do know are busy and they do their own lives and I just you know have not intermingled my life with too many people 
a few here and there over these last few years, but it ha it's not difficult for me to go, oh, I'm just not going to see anybody because I basically don't see anybody anyway. Uh, I don't. So that's that hasn't been difficult for me. Staying home hasn't been difficult for me because this has just been my life. Uh, and especially through the winter, like I was definitely a in hibernation mode in my cave here and barely venturing out at all over the over the winter winter it's still really cold it just snowed the other day so I know that that we've transitioned into spring but I live in the mountains and it very much still feel feels like winter here um anyhow so in no, in that sense, it doesn't affect me. Uh, it's interesting to know that other people like are 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 not on the streets and they're at home and they're and you know it's like watching Jimmy Fallon from home on you know with his kids and his wife versus in the studio with an audience. It's just the reality is so. <laughs> so weird it's like everybody is at home or they should be um and I don't mean everybody obviously we have a lot of people that are not at home we need to have more people at home uh I'm worried for our healthcare workers I'm very worried for them especially when they're not getting treated properly when they're working under really messed up conditions that were not prepared for for the this it just wasn't um so I'm worried for them I am and I'm not and what I mean by that is they are pushing themselves so hard um they're on the front lines across the world and many many healthcare workers doctors and nurses and and people in the environment the more that you're around it, the harder it is, the more it's affecting you, the more you break down, the, you know, you're just, your immune system starts to get compromised. You're dealing with all of these emotions. You're in that high stress environment. You're around all these stressed out people. It's super intense. It's, I mean, yeah, when I start tapping into that, I'm just like, oh yeah. Um, So I'm worried that they're not taking care of themselves. That's what I'm worried about. And, and a lot of them don't lead the, the healthiest of lifestyles. And um, we only have so many of them. We only have so many in every single place. And, and like I said, when one person can potentially be responsible for 59 thousand people getting infected it's serious and it's to be respected and it is not being respected especially to the extent that it should in most parts of the world until it's gotten to a point where it's like all right and the only way to do that is to lock it down and we have yet they're talking about how the U.S. is locked down the U.S. is not locked down it isn't, um, not to the extent that it should be, not to the extent that it should have been a week or two ago or more ago at the very earliest or latest. Uh, and we have yet to see reality that the reality that is coming for us. We have yet to see that it is coming. Uh, the, the, the ideas, behaviors, and denials of people in the last few weeks are going to be showing up. It's going to manifest in these next couple weeks. Bottom line. So I'm going to bottom line it for us all. 
that's the bottom line and i'm not the only one saying that we know that that's going to happen we know we we're talking where if you're if you're plugged in at all you've heard about this thing called the apex and the curve but the apex is still going up in new york and it's still and it's going up in in new orleans it's going up in in los angeles people in la are delusional they're like oh well we're not packed in like in new york blah 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 um that's kind of beside the point you guys the way that it gets here is through travel and we're a major travel hub in san diego in orange county in la in san francisco uh so yeah I don't know why people don't get that. It's not about how you live. It's about how your the lifestyle of people moving around the world. When it shows you how this how this virus goes and moves and and grows, it shows you how it grows from the epicenter out, 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 out. It doesn't just stay in one spot and grow, 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 grow out from the center. It grows from having tentacles go out. So it, and then from there it grows and grows and grows and grows and grows. So it really doesn't matter how you're living. It matter like, like that you're not in big high rises. You know, we have apartment buildings all over the fucking, we're not stacked up like New York bullshit. Yeah, we are. Are you, what the fuck? <laughs> like, oh my God. There's, there's more and more apartment buildings and high rises being built in, in California every single day. Um, more than there were the day before, more than there were 10 years ago or 20 years ago by a lot. Um, and people are moving around more by a lot. And this is a, this is, I think we have like the fifth biggest economy in the world or something in California. Like really, like what does that tell you? There's a lot of movement going on here. And if you look at the way that, that California is laid out and the way that our, the way that people move from place to place, it is, it's, yeah. So you know, I mean, they're calling, we know already that New York was the central epicenter for the United States. So we go from, we go from Asia to the United States, basically just boom, boom. Okay. With what we know now, I'm not getting into other things that came, that information that I've gotten in the last couple of days that would conflux all of this let's just keep it simple but i want to put that out there because i don't want it some later date somebody go well you said that this is what it was back then and i'm like okay i'm just saying this because this is what we know to be true on a large scale even though information i got is very different in in different ways and timetables and all that but like i said again it's not necessarily important because i don't want the the messages to be to be lost in the details of information that I've gotten recently. So to keep it simple, it went from Asia, from China, and that whole, that whole area to the United States, to uh, Epicenter New York. From Epicenter New York, we all know people there, from there go and flower out throughout the United States. They go to Florida. They go to California. They they have stops in mid in the, the mid uh, middle of the country. There's layovers everywhere. People are in airplanes together, breathing this the recycled air. Um. And that really is the crux of it. This whole thing is very air, air centric in the, in its energy. It got around traveling by air in airplanes. Yes. Also in cruises. Um, but cruises are so long and so isolated. People go, ah, cruises. If plane rides were as long as, 
as cruises were, you would see the same exact, you would see a hundred percent almost infection rate with the amount of time that people, if your people were on planes, as long as they're on cruises for like two weeks straight, a hundred percent infection rate guaranteed. The reason why it doesn't become that on a cruise is because there's so much space. So we have to look at things a certain way. No matter what, it's an airborne, it's airborne. So it's just very, I'm just seeing, it's very air centric. I'm just seeing this whole thing with, with air a lot. And I have in the past with this. Um, but that's basically the way that this works. It works through movement and, and connection and, and, and infecting each other, especially not knowing it, obviously. Because if you're exhibiting symptoms and you're, you know, having your worst bout of what it would be to have the flu ever, like, ha ha is laughing at your worst flu with this. Um, if you're going to get it bad, you're not going to let, I mean, most people are not going to be like, yeah, come over, let's hang out. They're not going to be getting people sick or hopefully not going to be going out. I mean, once it gets really bad. But it's really within those first 14 days that you're super, super contagious, especially when you don't know you're contagious, you're asymptomatic, There's, you don't feel anything wrong with you because it's slowly working its way through your body, very covertly, and, and then it starts to ramp up the ramp up its energy um as it's at the more that it's in that incubate incubation period the more it's gaining in energy until it's like an explosion boom and a pop and then the body just has this reaction and then it like that's what people say like i feel fine and then boom all of a sudden it was this and then this and then this and then I had to go to the hospital. You know, it was like boom, 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 real, real fast with a lot of people. Um, so for me, I, I know that like with everything else that I can – handle and take care of for people it's it's just frustrating to not be able to help people like there's so many people that have it at this point there's so many people that are struggling with it at this point but I don't I don't know what to do about that other than to try to make it known as best as I can to as many people on social media, on my blog, on YouTube, on a podcast, on on Twitter, on Instagram to let people know that this is what I'm, I'm going to be doing more and try to put the word out more. Um, but... I've yet to help anybody and, and I'm not even charging. It's just on a donation basis, pay what you can, when you can. And I mean, I know eventually I will. It just frustrates me every day when I see, and I see stories of people who got sick and died and, um, and I, every single time I'm like, I could help them. I could help them. I could help them. I could help them. And it's just frustrating, just really, really, really frustrating for me. And it's, it's a, oh man, it's a lesson in patience and letting go and knowing divine timing and everything, but <laughs> it's so, it's so hard. It's so hard because... I am here for a reason. And when I'm not, I'm a tool to be used. <laughs> and if I'm not being used, I'm frustrated. <laughs> and when it's serious, I'm really frustrated. 
And it's just, this is just more of the same one, just a much bigger scale. I've been dealing with this all my life, especially when I understood what I, what I am and what I can do. <sighs> and seeing people keeping themselves from, from it for different reasons. Usually it's just out of fear. They just don't understand. They don't believe it. They think I'm crazy. Um, they, they, it's just not, I don't know. There's so many different reasons. It's just, it, it, they, whatever it is that's attached to them or within them wins the battle a lot of the time because I am really real, the real, real deal. And that is utterly terrifying to the energies within people who, that know I'm the extinguisher. So they start manipulating themselves and the energies of the traumas, the programs, the superstitions, the things they were taught, religion, the stigma. I mean, it's crazy the way people distance themselves from me and how I can help them because of what is triggered inside, despite what I can do for them. And like I said, this is something that I've been dealing with my whole life. When I was a little teeny tiny child and I was giving roomfuls of adults messages and most of them were just fascinated by what I knew and my age and how I could know all these things and give them information and messages. But most of them didn't do anything with that. <laughs> they were just like, wow, I can't believe you know all this stuff. And and it's so right on, you know, on point. And I mean, they didn't use the, that word, but um, that, that verbiage, but it was basically that. But I was basically like, you know, this little show pony, you know, it wasn't about taking heed to what the messages were that were coming through me to, to, to them. It was just more about being fascinated by what I was, you know? So that was frustrating. I stopped doing that and I lied about not being able to hear the angels or get the messages anymore. So I didn't have to deal with the bullshit. I think that if people listened to me, it would have been much different. I think I would have had a much different trajectory in my life if people actually listened to me from the age of five. And I could see that it mattered. I could see that not playing with my friends and... And, you know, running around and playing bikes and being in pools while I was in service to people, that it had some type of end game benefit that they were actually doing what they were being told to do by their guides. But for the most part, they wouldn't. And it drove me nuts because then. I would see them at these events that they would put on for me and they would ha and I, messages would come or they would ask questions and I would get the message and I would give them the messages and they would, you know, you're, you're a, you're a, you're a cog in the wheel of your, of your, of your life, of the machine of your life. And you have to move and do things to make things happen. So you can't just say, you know, I want, you know, pray for this and I want this and give me that and help me with this and then sit there and not do anything to help it happen. So it's like, and then come back to me the next time I see you in a few weeks and things have gotten worse. You didn't do it. And now you're oh, totally fucked. And, and I'm just sitting here going, what? what's your problem? And as a little child, I'm like, I don't understand this at all. 
Like you were told what to do. Why didn't you do it? You know, after, you know, time after time after time after time, it's difficult from a child's perspective, even for as old as a soul as I was in a child's body, that perspective was difficult for me to understand. Like you got the information. Why didn't you implement the information? <laughs> it's so simple. But most of the time they wouldn't. And they would, they would just complain and be the martyr, be the victim, be the, you know, narcissist, want to, you know, the, ugh, I just couldn't. And then when my mom was like, well, can you just, you know, maybe not be so serious about stuff all the time? And I was just like, I, um, I, it's not like I get to pick, you know, like what's coming here. It's not my idea. Uh, so to request me to alter messages makes me want to, like, I just couldn't. And so I was just like, you know what? I don't get any messages anymore. Imagine that. I'll be in the pool now. That's the short version of how that all went down. <laughs> if you want the long version, you can read it in my website. <laughs> but, and then it was pretty much turned off for a few years. I went to Columbia, visited my parapsychologist grandfather on, on my mom's side who worked with me um, in different ways with astral projection and... Uh, hypnosis and working with the pendulum and just energy in general but he didn't know I was a healer at that point he just knew I was really powerfully psychic or yeah and and I and I did not spend a whole lot of time with him unfortunately but it was enough and I've had so many other experiences too but um I think just the fact that if if you are to look into what I say, my story, watch the videos of people that I've helped and healed and animals as well, uh, if you read the testimonials and watch my videos that I do on YouTube and and get see how the information comes and know me to a certain you know it doesn't take a whole lot for people to recognize that I'm no bullshit and I'm real deal um and there's not a goddamn thing I could do about it this is who and what I am this is what I'm what I'm here for and 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 people can decide to just deny all of it and therefore I'm full of shit too. And no matter what I do or say, they're going to come up with something to try to dispute it and me. But that doesn't change the reality of who and what I am and what I'm able to do. And uh, I've had many people come at me in the internet world that I have to be plugged into or else nobody would know that I exist. So, you know, I do have to open myself up to a certain level. And this is also something that I've resisted because I don't want to deal with bullshit and people coming at me and calling me names and saying horrible things about me. Like it happens. I have people calling me an opportunistic, a profiteer, a con person. Um, and I'm like, I'm literally giving away what I do. How can you say that? Like, do you, like, you don't even know. Like I say, I can heal people with fight with, uh, COVID and, and it's like, how dare you? How dare you snake oil, try to snake oil people. And I'm like. How does that even apply? I'm not even saying, I'm not even charging. Like if you don't have the money, I'll do it anyway. How is that being a profiteer? But yet I got to deal with this bullshit and I've got to defend myself because if, because if they're coming at me like that and I don't, that's the impression that it's like, oh yeah, I guess that's what they are. So I have to fight back. 
it's still pretty shocking to me the level in which I don't get pushback. And I think, and I'm not really sure why that is. And it's always been like surprising to me uh, because I've, I've, I expect more, honestly. I expect more pushback with who and what I am and what I put out there. I don't get that much, honestly. I'm pretty protected from it. Um, but it's still frustrating, especially me being, you know, the last thing from a profiteer and a con person trying to, you know, swindle people out of money and saying I can do things that I can't do. Um, you know, it's just, not in any way shape or form reality it's not true it's a lie because number one I'm not money centric I'm not in it for the money I do need money to survive and to pay for things that's why I I accept money and I charge money for what I do but when it comes to, when it comes to this specific situation with this pandemic and this energy I, I understand it very well and I can help people with it. And I'm going to tell people that I can help people with it because I can save lives quite literally. And that's just frustrating to me when I get attacked for that and or ignored, you know, like I put a comment on a video a couple weeks ago or a week, whatever it was ago that I thought was like, the type of environment to be more supportive, I guess. And, and I talked about how you can help people and it's on a donation basis and all this stuff. And that comment didn't get one like, <laughs> and I'm like, really not one person. And I can't help it, just it, it frustrates me because it's just like, how nasty. Like, here I am saying, I will do this and I'm doing it to help people, not to get any money for it, just to help people. And I want to help as many people as I can. And there's not a single person that sees that and goes, wow, that's really cool. Let's at least give her a. A, a like on this of support um and that's frustrating because it's like I don't know what I don't know what I'm supposed to do <laughs> like what am I supposed to do but to I mean if you follow me you know I am putting it out there as best as I can I think I I, I don't know I mean and then Either people don't believe that what I say I can do, I can do. They're confused by it. Uh, I don't. I don't really know. Because I know at this point, there's been several people throughout the different places that I've put this information out there that has known somebody that has this illness. And I still, and, and I've contacted people directly as well in different, in different places where I've seen like, oh, my father has, you know, on Twitter or whatever. And I message like I can help and just get completely ignored. So it's like, all right, it, trust me, it, it comes through my mind several times a day to just go, fuck it, I'm done. I'm not putting it out there. I'm not saying a fucking word. I'm tired of this already and we have just begun. But at the same time, I'm like, no, I can't. I'm not allowed to. I'm not allowed to do that. I'm not allowed to let my frustrations on any level stop me. I just have to deal with it and process it and, and learn from it and learn to understand more and more and more why, why, why this is all happening and why people react the way that they do. And I do know on a certain level, but again... I'm human and it's frustrating to me that because of what it is that I am and what it is that I can do and what it is I put out there because I'm meant to share 
and give this information, whatever it is that I do and how I do it, that I'm guided to do, and the services that I'm that I provide and all this stuff that there's just this uh, there's just this stigma attached to it that I'm I'm not to be taken seriously or that I'm crazy for the things that I say or claim to know or do or have the abilities to do or whatever the fuck but it's all real I'm not making any of this shit up and I you know I, I don't magically spell all the people that I heal and the animals that I heal across the world uh, to think in some placebo effect that I'm healing and helping when I'm really not. I mean, that's impossible. And even though there's documentation of this stuff, it, it's still like, it doesn't get accessed. People don't even get that far. I mean, people are stopped before they even remotely get to that place to, you know, m m much of the time. So that's frustrating for me too. When somebody attacks me and then I'm like, do you even know what, you have no idea what you're talking about. Oh, she claims this and that. Oh, that's crazy. What a con artist, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, you're so ignorant and rude and programmed and triggered and, you know, it's like, I got to deal with this bullshit. You know, I know it's going to come to a point where, you know, there will be more people that, you know, try that. But when the proof is in the pudding and there's results that back up what I say, even go beyond what I say, uh, you know, it tends to sit people down because what can they do? They can't, they can't call me a profiteer if I'm not requesting money and I'll do it for free. So that, that, that bullet's taken out of the chamber and you can't call me a con artist if the person actually is healed instant fucking lay. Oh, my back hurts. Here, let me help you. Oh, my God, my back doesn't hurt anymore. It's not two, four, five weeks, ten months of treatment later. Your back starts to feel better and you're not chronically in pain anymore. It's right fucking now. <laughs> it's like, you know, that should, I don't make that shit up. That's the reality. So, it's like, well, I can't be a con artist if I've got these abilities that are fucking instantaneous. Who's the crazy one? I don't know. So it's like, and it just feels no matter how hard I want to break through this wall to get people to see and understand and hear me and take me seriously, it's fucking impossible. You would think in the middle of a pandemic when there's more people to help than ever, it's not as though there wasn't enough people to help before. And that idea was overwhelming to me. Like, with the amount of people that I can help in the world, I could be busy for infinite lifetimes over to the, to the point where, you know, people are going to need to wait for years for me to get to them. And that is just like, has always been overwhelming to me. Uh... And now it's like that plus this, that plus a pandemic. And yet I sit here unbooked. Like it just is what it is. It's so hard to get people to get there because it is that real. Like people go, what's the, like, you should be booked. I'm like, yeah, I should be, huh? I should be. But that takes a person going all the way through. All the way through. Plus, I also put in place my own checks and checkpoints for people. So I don't just have, if you go to my website and you want to book a session with me, you literally can't. There's no way to book a session with me. 
you can't just go to my website and go, I want, I want a healing session. This is the day that I want it. I'm paying for it and we're doing it. Woohoo! Like you can with so many other people. I don't do it like that. In the past, I used to not anymore. Now, you have to fill out a questionnaire and then I set up a time for us to get together and talk over Zoom and have a evaluation consultation for an hour if you have if you have something that uh, a medical a medical condition if you're somebody that is healthy or a light worker or an empath that wants to work with me in in healing and clearing um, without a nest an actual issue those are supposed to be 45 minutes I say supposed to be because they always go longer and that 60 minute one always goes longer and I don't charge for those but they're there because I want to meet the person that I'm going to be working with and connecting to and 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 working with on a spiritual level and and it also gives the other person the opportunity to meet me and feel what I can do because I do this this uh, a mini of this mini um, energy clearing, so they can feel it, even superficially how how that works. So then we can decide after that they understand that it's a real thing that they can really feel it and all that stuff. Um. So anyway, I do that so I can be protected in my own time, space, and energy, and energy output, and, and that relationship. Because it's, I see it for what it is. I see it that it's beginning a relationship with somebody on an energetic and spiritual level. And I need to know that me uh, making space for that person um on the books and in my life is worth my time and energy and space and they're in alignment to work with me and that's why I make it so people can't just straight out book with me because I don't want to work with any everybody not I'm not for everybody and and everybody's not for me unfortunately I wish I wish but that's just not the case um and, and that just also shows people like, I'm serious here. I'm not here to just book time and bullshit and collect money. Like there's a process here and there's a reason for that. And, and just like going to any other doctor, you wouldn't just show up for a procedure to be like, okay, I'm here for you to take my appendix out. They'd be like, what the fuck? Who are you? Like, I don't even know you. Like, what are you doing here? You're crazy. Like, imagine. You know, and that's the way that I see this. I see this like that. This is the this is the process that we get to getting to the procedure. And other than call you know, talking on the phone as like psychic advice, I'm open for business in that sense. So you can buy time to talk with me on the phone or talk with me over video. Um, you don't have to have an evaluation for that. You don't have to have an evaluation to order or to get tarot card readings and oracle readings from me but everything else you do uh and it's just better for for both of us better for everybody involved that that's the case because i think it just takes the pressure off and it puts a lot of of chips on the side of the discovery pile versus the unknown pile before a person books time and spends money and lays down to get a healing with me they have a lot of boxes checked to make to make the process that less scary and just more comforting and peaceful for them and for me so so there's so there's that too uh so anyway you guys (laughs) I did not intend to go and talk about all of that for over an hour, but it is what's going on. It is uh, part of the energies of, of what I want people to understand that's going on right now. 
with with the virus we have a lot and I'm going to be getting into that more but I'm going to do a part two so this isn't super super long um this is already going on an hour and 10 minutes here so what we're going to do because I had an actual there's a thing we're going to get into and it started yesterday and it's really amazing and I did videos on it last night but and I may put them up uh we'll just see about that but for now I'm going to be doing this over audio and for the podcast I'll also put it on my on my YouTube channel as well we're going to be getting into that in this part two that we're going to do coming up and that's going to be talking about what happened last night when the devil card showed up and also um, more information and more things to look at at this time and it's really really fascinating and interesting so we will start right back up here in just a minute part two coming up <laughs> 